The rumor mill's churning for the Houston Rockets. Salman Ali, who's independently covering the Rockets, whatever that means, he says, in my conversations, the name Zion Williamson has come up as a potential trade target for Houston. I saw after I noticed this that some other like heavy hitters have like picked up on this as well. Mm-hmm. That Zion Williamson's being shot by the Pelicans and a team that continues to come up is the Houston Rockets. Would you be interested in the real big boy coming to the Houston Rockets? Well, I'll tell you what. Of all the people that I haven't been intrigued with, the fact that when I heard it was the number four pick and some sweeteners and things, to get Zion Williamson. As much as he's underachieved, and I know he's got a big contract too, but instead of Harden, instead of some of the names that I'm completely out on, Mm -hmm. to put a a talent like Zion Williamson and give him a fresh start, he's still very young, I'm intrigued by that. I would definitely be kicking the tires on that deal, and I'm listening to what the details are. I don't have a whole lot of faith that Zion Williamson turns into like a megastar in the NBA. Um, his commitment to playing, I think is, you know, worth questioning his commitment to being in shape worth questioning, um, all of those things. Uh, his even, commitment to females is worth questioning after his, last uh, week on social media. He seems to like a lot of them. Um, well, he can't make a commitment. His injury history is, is worth discussing as well, mm-hmm. but the Rockets have to spend money, right? They have to spend money to hit the salary floor. Names that we've talked about, James Harden, Kyrie Irving has come up, Fred Van Vliet, who's a solid like player, that. but you're getting him $35 million a year is, seems extreme. Um, you're going to have to spend money. And then also, like, if it's mostly draft capital, whenever you're making draft picks in the NBA, and the Rockets, like, we don't think they're going to have top five picks going forward. Now, they have draft protection on the picks they own to Oklahoma City, but you don't think they're going to be drafting in the top four. So whenever you're drafting a guy, especially in the NBA, especially that's not a top five, top ten pick, it's a huge roll of the dice. It's a huge gamble. It's a, it's a huge guessing game. Zion Williamson, while he might not ever reach his potential, might not ever reach his talent, I'd rather take a flyer on a, and a gamble on Zion Williamson than the Thompson Twins. I I would be turning over every stone. I would be very interested in a year where I need to spend money when I have tons of draft picks to see if I could turn that into Zion Williamson. Agreed. I I don't want whatever's available at number four right now unless Scoot or Miller would somehow slide, and I don't see that happening. I am intrigued by Zion Williamson because unlike even a Fred Van Vliet, though as much as I, I really want Fred Van Vliet of the guys that are available because they do have to spend the money, He's already won a championship. He's getting older. I I don't know that he is the perfect fit inside the locker room and on the court with the young core that they have. Zion's still young enough where he can blend with those guys. And And from both sides, it makes a lot of sense. Zion needs a fresh start. He needs to get away from Brandon Ingram and 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 um who's the the guy from, from Portland? CJ McCollum. The guys that they already have make his goals and aspirations of becoming the man. It's almost impossible. Whereas here, he would have talent around him, young talent that he would blend in with, and he would also still have an opportunity to set himself apart as being one of the guys. I think it makes a lot of sense on both sides. Yeah, I would I would roll the dice. And I, I would roll the dice on Zion also telling you I don't think he reaches his potential. I think you're po- possibly right. But the one thing that you don't, which makes it more intriguing is when he does play and he is on the floor, he puts up numbers – and he could be dominant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if he gets right, even if he only gets right for two or three years, yeah. like, if if he gets right in the right Ride year. Write this contract out. Exactly. And if he gets, like, again, we don't think the Rockets are going to win a title in the next three, four, five years. But what about in year six? Zion Williamson has it clicking for just a two, three-year span. You get two of these young players that click for a two- to three-year span. You can put it all together no for doubt. one or two years and compete. Like, Zion Williamson and has superstar potential. No question. And as it relates to Tillman and the infatuation with Harden and all these things, Zion puts you on the map nationally still. Everyone's watching what Zion does. We know this. We saw this because in a, the chance to get into the playoffs and make the play-in, everybody was focused on his warm-ups. Mm-hmm. He's got the endorsements. He's got the ability to be a guy that will put you on the map from that perspective. He's going to sell tickets. He's going to get people that are going to be quickly interested and energized by him joining this team and possibly getting that fresh start. And I think that because he's so young and we might not have yet seen his peak, no matter what that may or may not turn out to be, the fact is if you can just get him right uh, health-wise 
or keep him on the floor, he has the potential to put up really, really beneficial good numbers for your team. 11-0-6, Zion healthy is MVP worthy. You know, I don't maybe know if I'm going to go that far. Maybe if he puts it all together in four or five years. Like, I mean, we thought he was going to be an MVP level player this? when he all-star got drafted. All-star worthy. Yeah, I think he's easily an all-star. Yep. He puts it all together, which is a huge if. Uh, 8 6 9 6, the day after it came out, the Pelicans are wanting to trade up and get Scoot. The Rockets are out there saying that they don't see a difference between Scoot and uh, a man, uh, man Thompson. I actually saw this written by Kelly Eco before the Zion Williamson rumors. So Eco had this out, but it started to circulate after uh, the the Zion Williamson uh, stuff, the Zion Williamson rumors. Kelly wrote, I think it was last week, I remember reading it. He said the uh, the Rockets don't think the gap between Men Thompson, Scoot Henderson, and Brandon Miller is actually not as quite large as people assume it's going to be. They think it's quite minimal. I'm calling BS. I think it's a wide margin, a Grand Canyon wide divide between those two three players, and then Thompson. But I can understand why the Rockets are putting that Ahmed, out there. Alan Thompson was in town. Yeah, I saw him meeting with yeah. Rafael Stone. Someone doing that whole sly sly little picture. Yep, at I some point, I hope Rafael is cagey enough to realize if the same dude is sitting across from us at the same table every time we meet with somebody, uh-huh. he might be a, a, a spy. He's a plant. Yeah. I think they wanted that out there. You think so? Yes. I, I think that from the standpoint of, and I'm interested in your thoughts on this, do you think if Miller doesn't have all the off the court stuff, do you think that Miller is the clear cut two and maybe the one? No, because no, you've seen him play. He's definitely not one. So he's not Victor. I get he's, that. Yeah, he's definitely not that. one. I can. I think the conversation at two is worth having. Like he might end up being the second pick with that with the off the off the court stuff. You know, being in the scene of a murder. Um, there's a lot of, because of the fact that they aren't willing to talk about it in the interviews and they're shying away from it. There's a lot of teams that have apprehension about what's truly there. I think it depends. It depends a lot on what you're seeking. Like if you're a team that needs point guard, I think Scoot's the easy decision. If you're a team that wants like some sort of perimeter scoring on the wings, then Brandon Miller is the decision. But let's assume that I have a blank canvas and I don't have a player at all. And like I'm an expansion team. I personally, even off the floor stuff, I would go Scoot over Miller. Okay. Even if like blank canvas, but if I'm a team that has like a really good young point guard already, and I lack perimeter scoring, yeah, I'm taking Brandon. Yeah, because I'm not they, forcing Scoot over Miller. Plus, they say Scoot's got to work on his shot and and, he does. and his mechanics. He does. So, I think he can be Russ. I really do. Right, and that's if he never even rectifies his shot to a to a higher degree. Mm-hmm. But if it is possible this early in his career to be able to work on his shot to get better, I, I think that that's. That's a that that's a too enticing to pass up because yeah. I think with his size, his ball handling ability, his decision making, the way he passes the rock, the physicality, he looks like he's he, he looks, looks like, like a, a kid that can develop and really even get stronger and be, and more athletic. That's a, that's enticing to any team. I see Russ whenever I, I watch him. It's like, not a bad and, it's and not a bad comp. That that's a it's a high mark to put on a kid because I mean Russ how many years in a row did he average a triple double? He's won MVPs. That's that's a pretty high bar. But like that's my comp. Whenever I watch Scoot, like I, he he doesn't have a great shot, but I think he's just going to out athlete people. And Russ wasn't even a point guard coming into the NBA. No, it's crazy. I, when they drafted him, I was like, well, I don't know how you can see this dude as a point guard, but I know what you do see, which is one hell of an athlete. 